Yo, after spending 24 hours doing Goblin Clicking Simulator, I decided to do something less click intensive, which is AFK Hill Giants. And by saying AFK Hill Giants, I mean actually AFK and do them in the wildy. Since I do not want to do charity to PKers, I'm only taking three runite items, chain body, plate legs and rune sword. Aside from that, I just pick a couple pieces of food and some teleportation runes, preferably Falador Teleport, which is close to the bank. If I ever need to get anything for clue scrolls, I can just pick it from the bank. Talking about clue scrolls, Hill Giants have a decent 1 in 50 drop rate for beginner clues. Also, even though in a wildy you're gonna get probably lower kill count since you are AFKing, but Giant key drop rate is double compared to regular hill giants. So this way you also gonna get decent amount of giant keys. And for the purpose of the series I will count giant keys as 0.5 clue scrolls since they basically give a guaranteed clue scroll after killing the boss. As you can see the hill giants area is easily accessible from Ferox Enclave. So I can just come back after doing the clues by using minigames teleport. And once I come here, I just stand in a place over these small rocks and AFK for 10 minutes at a time, then just move to other spawn that's a little bit south from here. Okay, we got first KC 25 minutes into the day. So once we're gonna reach 25 minutes into the next day, we are done. This clue scroll update that allows you to keep clue scrolls on the floor for one hour is so awesome. Basically, I got a clue that requires Warrock teleport, but I'm missing a fire rune. I will just put it down on the floor and wait till I get fire rune from hill giants. A historical moment coming in. I'm about to get my first level 80 skill on free to play locked Iron Man. Just one last hit and there we go, 80 strength and this also gave me a combat level. Let's wait for some GZs in clan chat. And by the way, I'm gonna train defense now. I don't know if any of you have been anticipating this, but I was burying some bones time after time. And with this one, I'm gonna get 57 prayer. I just came back and realized that I'm smacking hill giant with bronze axe freaking bronze axe that i used for my last clue scroll i guess i gotta pick these nature runes and teleport out and get my rune sword again bro i went to the bank restocked my runes came back to hill giants and now i just realized that i'm still using that same bronze axe Finally, a clip of me not using Bronze Axe and I get 78 hit points, which increases my total level. Been AFKing for too long, I even missed 66 defense level up. By the way, I'm almost at 11 million total experience. I noticed that at this point I can re aggro very easily by just moving a few tiles and back. And it gets aggressive once again. Love these double clue plus giant key drops, basically 1.5 clue for the series. There we go, I'm not gonna miss a level this time. 67 defense coming in and also getting 92 combat. Already got two combat levels in one episode. When was the last time this happened? I can't remember. Body talisman. Ladies and gentlemen, only minutes are remaining in this 24 hours episode. There we go, I guess the time should be around done. 24 hours of AFK Hill Giants completed. To sum up, I can tell that I really enjoyed this one because it's AFK most of the time. I can focus on other screens, play other accounts, work on other interesting series. I won't tell you about this series right now, but uh, yeah, I'm working on other interesting accounts. And now let's teleport to Warrock and check what did we get from all these hill giants.
There we go, let's check the spoils of 24 hours. By the way, I managed to lose one clue scroll somewhere. So now I have one casket less than I'm supposed to have. Or maybe it was just a bug and show that I got one extra clue, who knows. Also got 22 giant keys which will convert into 11 clue scrolls for the sake of series. Even though it's actually 22 caskets after killing Obor. Fun fact, I didn't meet a single PKR in 24 hours. Which means this activity is more or less safe. Like most of the other wildy content in free to play. Now I guess let's open the bank and start putting in all the stuff I got. So I also got some metal items, especially iron full helms and iron kite shields. This will also add up to my collection. Then got some iron daggers that I can use for charlie steps and steel longswords. Also got couple hundred of iron and steel arrows. This will also be useful for range training. Got a decent amount of limp roots. Of course I didn't collect all of them, but... The ones I collected are useful for exchanging two potions, decent amount of coins, over 20k by just collecting junk coin drop. Also got decent amount of fire and water runes, a little bit of mind runes, then some useless cosmic runes. Also death runes and chaos runes for casting spells, lore runes for teleportation and Almost 200 nature runes. Talking about drinks, hill giants are really awesome for collecting beer. I managed to collect almost 100 glasses of these. And now it's a more interesting part for gamers. I collected some Anka gems, which converts into a whooping amount of 1465 crafting experience. Other thing that gives some banked experience are body talismans, which converts into 1.1k runecrafting experience. For conclusion, I can tell if you want to bank 99 crafting and runecrafting, you will have to AFK hill giants for one and a half year of gameplay. Now it's time to check the clue leaderboards. Hill giants ended up above mine golems even with way lower kill count since we have been afking them also 11 of the points have been obtained by giant keys which are 2 to 1 ratio also according to the statistics clue drop rate is 1 in 40 but actual clue drop rate was 1 in 52 this statistic is little bit rigged just because of giant key drops but anyways, Hill Giants claim rank number 3 for the series. And now it's time for my favorite part of each episode, which is opening the caskets. Only got 37 of them, so it won't take long at all. So far, nothing impressive in the first few. I am still looking for that famous Black Warhammer. I got Black Weapon, but it's not a Warhammer. It's a dagger, which I have like 5 of, I think. Uh, one third of the caskets done, nothing impressive so far. Monk's robe top, I feel like I have like 10 of them. Oh, it's only number 7. Okay, let's continue opening, I guess. 22 caskets left. Get some cabbages. Steel armor collection. More cabbages. Black chain body, this is one of the rarer black items in my bank, I think. And demon feats into back to back. Some steel longswords. I had a lot of steel longswords from hill giants, so that's the last thing I'm looking for. Some food for collection, always welcome. Another steel longsword that I do not need, bronze arrows. We are down to 10 caskets, getting more runes. Quite a decent stack of mind runes in the last casket. Nine caskets remaining. Actually, I feel like it, it's about the time I get some more beer feats. I only have two of them. Okay, last few caskets. Steel skirt, black skirt. 
I think it was unique like last episode or so and I now get a duplicate. Now some useless caskets. Last three, two, one black warhammer, no. Well, this time I still didn't get a black warhammer, means I will have to do like 1000 more clues. Anyways, let's open the collection log and just look at all these items I have already accumulated from all the beginner clues I've done. Slowly getting close to 1.2k, maybe one day I will reach 2k if I'm not getting black warhammer for much longer. At the moment I'm missing black medhelm and as I mentioned black warhammer. I feel like I should start asking people to make predictions on which clue I will get black warhammer. Oh, and by the way, cabbage collection is slowly getting close to 1k. After all, thank you for watching. It was a really relaxing, nice episode. See you in the next one. And no, I won't be grinding 70 crafting in the next one.